Hello friends, this video on periodic classification of elements part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 4. Now let's understand the Mendeley periodic table, the, the best periodic table I can say, the best of all. So this guy what he did was he arranged the elements based on their fundamental properties, atomic mass and also based on the chemical property. But chemical property was given the first priority. So at that time there were 63 elements known so he, his work was on this 63 elements. It first tried to find the relation between atomic mass and the chemical and physical property. And to find the chemical properties relationship, he selected the hydrogen and oxygen as because they were very, very reactive and they formed compounds with most of the elements. So they, he, he reacted most of the elements with hydrogen and oxygen and the way it reacts with hydrogen and oxygen, for example, this is some metal X and it reacted with hydrogen, it gives something and X react with oxygen it gives something right it may be Ra maybe XH maybe XH2 right maybe in this case maybe XO it can give X2O it can give XO2 right it can give X2O3 based on, based on the uh, property of the element right so it can react in different ways so similarly with hydrogen also it can react in different ways it can give XH3 it can give XH4 so based on the reaction of the element with hydrogen and oxygen, he grouped the elements, correct? And then he also used the atomic mass to arrange them, correct? So that is the formula of hydrides and the oxides, which you get the hydrate and the oxides formula, which you get was one of the critical parameter for classification of the element. So what he did was actually for, uh, he took, for example, 63 elements, right? He took 63 cards. In each of these cards, he wrote this element name. For example, the element name is X, and this guy found some hydride XH and some oxide XO2, let's suppose, right? And atomic masses, let's suppose, um, 58, let's say, anything. So this guy, he, he created cards like this. He created 63 cards like this with all the 63 elements name and all the hydrides and oxides and all the atomic mass. Once he had all these values, right, he know all the 63 elements name, he know the atomic mass of all the 63 elements, he know the hydrides and the oxides form. Now he group these elements based on these hydrides and oxides. They are the critical thing here. See, if you see the last one, the new lines law of active, he arranged based on the atomic mass alone, right? So his, his, his parameter was atomic mass. And then he found that they have similar chemical property. But this guy, for him, the critical thing is chemical property. And then he he's trying to arrange the atomic mass, right? And if he, he finds some missing objects, he has created gaps also in the tables. We'll explain that. But let's understand that both have a different approach. In the new lens uh, one, what he did was, his, his uh, primary concern was the increasing atomic mass. And then he found that coincidentally, they have a repetitive chemical property. For this guy, the critical or the main thing was, it should have same properties, chemical properties than this the kind of hydrates and oxide it form should be similar and then the second critical thing was the atomic mass correct so he sorted these elements based on the similar properties and observed that most of the elements got a place in the periodic table and they were arranged in the order of atomic mass increasing atomic mass so he was able to arrange them correct and he also observed the periodic recurrence of elements with similar physical and chemical property. That's what, what new lens have observed. He also observed here also. Correct. And in for on basis of all this experiment he did, he, he gave a periodic law, right? And you state that the property of the elements are the periodic function of the atomic mass. This is the law he gave. This law is called Mendeley's periodic law. It says that property of the elements are periodic function of atomic mass. Please note it's atomic mass. We don't need the atomic number now because atomic number is not even discovered by this time, right? Because the electron itself was not discovered. All this atomic mass which we uh, use here is all found by the chemical reactions because the base of all this was the, 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 the Dalton theory. The John Dalton gave this uh, theory in 1804 where he told the mass can neither be created nor can be destroyed and with that uh, stoichiometry equations 
uh, they, they found the chemist found a lot of atomic masses and this was the atomic mass that was used by Mendeley. I hope it is clear to you. So what he has done was he reacted these elements with hydrogen oxide. He found different hydrides, different oxides and based on the hydrides and oxide found, he clubbed these elements, right? And then he arranged these elements um, based on the increasing atomic mass, keeping in mind that all this form uh, which forms similar hydrides, similar oxides are in a similar group. I'll show you the picture with that. I think it will be more clear. For example, if you see, uh, the hydrates can be R2O kind instead of X, they're using R here or RO, R2O3, RO2, R2O5, RO3, R2O7 and RO4. So there are different kinds of hydride he found and then he clubbed all these elements, right? And then hydra the oxides for hydrides, RH, RH2, RH3, RH4, RH3, RH2, RH. These were the hydrides. So based on these two, he clubs, for example, for these combination, he found these many elements. So he club all these into one group. Correct. All this into one group. All this into one group. So he, he grouped elements like this. Correct. And then if you see, he he called his uh, vertical columns as groups. So these guys were groups. So group one, group two, group three. And these were all periods. Right, they are periods. He he called this use this word groups and periods, which are also used in the modern periodic table. So with this, if you see everything is atomic mass here, hydrogen atomic mass, and then uh, if you see there's a lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, all the atomic mass, right? And based on the properties, so this was the kind of periodic table he found, which was pretty good. Very very few limiters in that, but it was very good actually. So we'll explain the merits and demerits of these uh, periodic table. So let's do this. Hope you understand how he found this periodic table. So let's understand the achievement of this uh, Mendeley periodic table. First thing is predicted some of the elements which are not discovered at that time because when he arranged the elements, he found that some elements uh, are missing because some of the elements atomic masses were missing, and then he he guessed it. He guessed that, okay, there will be an atomic um, element which will be found in your future, which should have atomic mass of 68. And he called that guy as Ekka aluminium because it used to come before aluminium. And that element was found in future and we call that element, that element as gallium. And he also, uh, uh, what do you call, guessed the formula of oxides and chlorides. If you see, he guessed that that particular element which will have a formula of E2O3 based on his periodic table and that's what it, it was. He also gets the formula of chloride or hydride to be like this that is ECL3 and we found that gallium also follows the same suit. So he guessed the existence of some element which we should not discuss at time. Not only the existence of the element but also the physical, not physical, the chemical property of the elements. he could predict properties of several elements based on their position. As I told, these uh, elements, right? I mean, they were elements for which the property was not found. But based on the position, he could tell, okay, this guy will form hydrates in this fashion. This guy will form oxides in this fashion, right? Because if you see, this periodic table is all based on the oxides and hydrides, right? If you see the way it is formed. So, for example, this guy, uh, he has not reacted, he don't know how it reacts. But just because this guy is in group 7, he can say that this guy will form oxides like this. It will be Br207 and will form hydrides like this, BH. So that's what uh, the, the purpose is, right? So in this case, let's suppose uh, it's very difficult to uh, react uh, this guy with oxygen at that point of time. So what he told, okay, I don't know how to react, but but I know that this guy La will react with oxygen, it will form something like La2O3. And if this guy reacts with hydrogen, it will form something like LH3. And that was true also. If you react those things in chemistry lab, and you'll see that that was the kind of reaction it goes through, right? So, so with just by looking at the uh, position of the element, for example, Ti. So 10 if it reacts with oxygen, if it reacts, it will form TiO2. 
and if it reacts with thyroid, it will form TIH4. Those were the kind of things he was able to tell just by looking at the position of the element in the periodic table. Also, he could accommodate normal gas because these gases were discovered at that time only. So once he was uh, done with the table, after that the normal gases were discovered, but he was able to accommodate that. So his table was able to accommodate that. That was one good thing about his table. Now let's see the limitation of this table. The first thing, the isotopes were also discovered that time when this normal gas was discovered. But the position of isotopes could not be explained. As I told, as isotopes are elements with same atomic number, right, but different atomic mass. Right, if you see, these are all uh, isotopes of carbon, 12, 13, 14. So, since they are different atomic mass, they should be different, uh, they should be placed differently in the table, right? But that's what not his table allowed. His table allowed only carbon to be placed once. So the position of isotopes could not be explained that time, right? So this was uh, isotopes were discovered after a long time after the Mendeley proposed his periodic table. But once the isotopes were discovered, these isotopes could not get placed in periodic table, and that was not very good, correct? Also, some uh, order of atomic mass was wrong actually in some case, and that could not be explained. For example. The cobalt, cobalt was 58.9, it came before nickel and nickel is 58.7. So this guy came, it is like this 58.9 came, then 58.7 came. There was a, a debate on this, why it is happening like this, though it was only 0.2 difference, but generally uh, it should be first will come, then second, then third like this, right? It should not be the other way. So the, the wrong atomic mass order was not explained at that time, right? Also, hydrogen was not uh, assigned a correct position because hydrogen has the property both of alkali metals and halogens. So, if you see, hydrogen believe, uh, behaves like chlorine a lot of times and also behaves like sodium, right? So, what should be the position of hydrogen was not confirmed because his uh, uh, classification in the groups was based on the way uh, element react with hydrogens, right? Or the way element react with oxygen, right? So with this, uh, hydrogen behave uh, both as alkaline halogens. So the position of hydrogen was not clear. Also, he could not answer this question. Is it possible to have an element of atomic mass 3 between hydrogen and helium? This was the question. For example, hydrogen has atomic mass 1, helium has, let's suppose, uh, 4, right? So can we have one element atomic number 3 here? Because atomic mass can be any number, it can be 4.08, 4.95, right? So between let's suppose 4 and 4.5, you can't say how many atomic mass can exist, maybe 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, you can't say, right? But if it is something like numbers, I say that some quantity is number, for example, it has to be number, then I can say between 1 and 3, they can be only one number, that is 2, right? But if some quantity is not numbered, because this guy is not numbered, right? This guy is not, sorry, this guy is not, uh, this guy is not natural number. So this guy is not, this guy is decimal number, right? So in that case, I can't see how many decimal number can exist between this particular number. For example, between 4 and 5, I, between 4 and 6, tell me how many decimal numbers can exist. There can be many because 4.5, 5, 5.2, 5 5.5. There's so many numbers, but between 4 and 6, how many uh, national number can exist? Only one. Correct. Right. So, since atomic mass was a decimal number actually, this is a non national number, so it was not possible to tell. If someone asked the question, is can there be element between hydrogen and helium? The answer was, I don't know, because they can be, they can, may not be, right? So, these kind of limitations were there with modern periodic table. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.